Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. Whether you're a pastor or a lay leader in your local church, the topic today will be a great blessing to you in your ministry. We're talking about growing disciple makers, a fascinating title. Our guest is Pastor Glenn Townend. Glenn, it's great to have you as our guest. Mm, thank you. Good and to be here. And you have a broad responsibility. Mm -hmm. Tell me where you're serving in ministry right now. Uh, South Pacific Division. And that's what countries? Uh, Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea are the big countries. And then all the islands of the Pacific uh, or the South Pacific. And you are the president, so you're the chief vision caster. Uh, that's the idea, yeah. And what we're talking about today, I know, is kind of woven into your DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, growing disciple makers. So where would you like to start with the conversation? Ah, well, Derek, I've got some fruit here. Um, but I want you to tell me what you actually see. Well, I see a red apple. I'm not sure, maybe a gala or a Fuji. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what kind, but yeah, your eyes are okay. Um, okay, what, what, what do you see here? I see a green pear. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe a, I'm not sure what kind it is. A, I'm not an expert on no, pears. No, no, no. But it looks good. Nor am I. So, so you've noted colour and name. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? Um, I see something good to eat. Okay, yeah, yeah. food. Got, yep. Yeah, okay. What else? Um, wow, what else do I see? Something that will, I guess, rot if you don't eat it. Mm -hmm. It's degradable because um, those are real pieces of fruit. Sure, they are. Um, yeah, do you see shape? Yeah, one's a little more kind of like a sphere, another one's like a, a drop of water. True, and they could probably call it pear shape. That's right. <laughs> and, and Derek, yeah, look, your eyes are, are okay, but i got to say that I don't think you're seeing like Jesus. I mean, you're a good pastor, but you're not seeing like Jesus. So tell me what Jesus would see, Glenn, when he looks at those two pieces of fruit. Well, let, first let me read uh, Mark chapter 4. Um, and in Mark chapter 4, verse 8, and then in verse 20. But Mark chapter 4 and verse 8 says, Still other seed fell on fertile soil. They sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, even 100 times as much as had been planted. And then verse 20, And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as has been planted. So what I would suggest to you, Derek, if Jesus was here, he would say apple orchard, pear orchard. Mm. So he sees way beyond that immediate mm. piece of fruit and sees the potential impact. Yeah. And, and I mean, both of us know there's probably six seeds in each and in each of those seeds is life. And apple trees and, and pear trees. That's right. And more than one. And, and each could produce 30, 60, 100, even in one season. Mm. Um, and, and so I think Jesus is trying to stretch our vision of what we see. Now, he's not talking about fruit or being a good orchardist, but he's actually talking about us as people. And that he looks at you and I, and he says, if you allow me to work in your life, I can do something that you can't see yet, but I can reproduce you 30, 60 or 100 times. Now, I sense you're going to take some lessons from this whole process of the orchard because um, just in order for that the, that apple and that pear to become an apple orchard and a pear orchard, there's some work that needs to be done. Sure. So what is the first thing that an orchardist would do? 
to, well, to see that potential to become an orchard? We'd need to choose some ground mm -hmm. uh, that was going to be the orchard. Yeah. And um, get the ground ready in some way. Yeah. And, and I think uh, preparing the soil is probably the key because if you look at the parable, the harvest depended on the type of soil that the seed went into. If it's good soil, you get a good harvest. If it's bad soil, bad harvest or no harvest. And so Jesus is, is, I guess, challenging us, what kind of soil is at our hearts? Mm. Now, every metaphor is somewhat limited because in, in the parable, you've got the hardened path, you've got the rocky soil, the, the weeds and the mm. thistles, and then you've got the good soil. Is there something, if you're wanting to turn those into an orchard, can you actually help to prepare the soil? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, if we're talking about, you know, digging, fertilising and all of that, but preparing the soil is making the heart ready to receive the seed. Mm. And I think in disciple making, we can prepare people's hearts by um, praying for them, um, serving them, Meeting their needs. Uh, yeah, what Jesus it, did exactly uh, doing that kind of kind of thing, and and um, you know I know some churches in villages in Fiji, for example, who give buckets to people to help them carry water. Very simple. Very simple. <laughs> but everybody loves the Seventh Day Adventist disciple because of that is those buckets. I know others who who run groups for mothers in Australia. And just by supporting mothers new, with newborns, they're, they're open to listening or their hearts are being prepared to receive something more. We're going to be talking more after the break about growing disciple makers, but to see as Jesus does, not just an apple and a pear, but an apple orchard and a pear orchard and realizing if that miracle of transformation is going to happen, that miracle of multiplication is going to happen. We need to prepare the soil. After the break, we'll talk about the process of growing disciple makers. It's an exciting journey. We'll be right back with more Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, Growing Disciple Makers. Our guest, Pastor Glenn Townend. Glenn, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated with how Jesus can look at what I see as apple and a pear and see an apple orchard and a pear orchard. We talked about seeing as Jesus does and then preparing the soil. Uh, what's the next step? We're talking about growing disciple makers. Sure. Well, if the soil is prepared, that's when the, the farmer, the orchardist goes and plants the, the seed. Um, and in uh, the work of disciple making, seed sowing is sharing the gospel, the, the story of Jesus. Um, I have people say, oh, we're sharing, uh, planting the seed by the soup kitchens that we do. And, and I say... Yes, soup kitchens are good because they're preparing the soil. Right, that's the soil preparation. But if you're not sharing Jesus in your personal testimony, and that's probably the best way for everyone to share um, or plant a seed, is actually tell people what Jesus is doing in your mm. life. And then others have the gift of a, and ability to do Bible studies or others just get people together and say, well, let's read the Bible together and uh, see, see what God, God says. So the seed of the word of God, 1 Peter 1 verse 23, basically says it's eternal. There's nothing wrong with the seed. And so if the seed is planted in somebody's heart that's prepared and ready to accept it, that's not stony or full of weeds, there's potential for the seed to actually all by itself to grow and develop. Mm. The gospel has a transforming um, sense about it. Um, it will change people's lives. You know, when you talked about sharing your own testimony, I, I think of the man 
freed from a legion of demons. Mm. Jesus just said, go back and share what the Lord has done for you. That's right. That would mean that everyone could be a, a seed planter. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As long as they didn't just eat the fruit and throw it away, <laughs> right? They see it as a, as a potential orchard. Mm. Um, and they need to see themselves as Jesus sees them, that they can be a multiplying disciple maker. Mm. And Powerful. Yeah, and, and to, to share your testimony um, is a really good way of doing that. Now, I'm not a great uh, orchardist or a gardener, but I know there's more to growing a garden or growing an orchard than just sticking the apple seeds and the pear seeds sure. in the ground. Uh, so let, let, let's go to the next step and, and talk about what that would mean in real life for growing disciple makers. Yeah, well, I, I, there needs to be water, fertilizer, weed, um, you know, protection. Um, so I see the next phase as kind of cultivating or caring for the plant, making sure that it has all that is needed because in the soil, all by itself, it has power to grow. Mm. And so you're not responsible for the person growing. No. But you are, as a, you're a disciple maker, or you're joining mm. the Lord of the Harvest, right? Yes. Um, there are some things that you can and maybe even must do. Yeah, and that's kind of supporting them. Because to grow, we need fertilizer. And the word of God and prayer is like that. So mm. teaching new people how to pray, how to connect with God, mm. how to you know, repent, confess, give praise, um, how to read the, the Bible just chapter by chapter, how to do a Bible study. They're all kind of ways that grow a person. Mm. And so just by connecting, listening, um, eating with people, sharing life together, mm. and your spiritual life kind of cares for them. And, you know, there will be weeds. There will be temptations. The enemy mm. does, you know... Attack people. Yeah, sure. with all kinds of things. Mm. And so to be there and support and, and help people through that is important in the cultivating caring phase of making mm. disciple makers. I was talking to a young lady uh, just this week uh, and she said when she's studying the Bible with people and, and uh, they're learning, she considers it part of her work to pray for them mm. during the week. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, so it's not just praying with them when they study the Bible. No. But praying, praying for, for them. them. Yep. And then teaching them how to pray themselves. For themselves. Yeah. Sure. Anything else in terms of cultivating? You use the illustration of water and um, fertilizer and weed control. Yeah. I mean, I think temptation is real. Persecution is real. Um, and so just giving them strategies of how to be strong and how to find support in others, other mature people. And, and being there for people, I think, is really um, significant in caring and cultivating. Um, inviting them to seminars, groups, uh, where they'll meet other people that, you know, can support them, I think is all significant. And perhaps even church. You know, I, I, it mixes the metaphor, of course, because you can't talk to a plant. But uh, certainly with a child um, or with a person, a word of affirmation. Uh, mm. Wow, I'm really seeing you grow. Uh, they may not be where they will be, but they're not where they used to be. Exactly. I think that also can be an encouragement. Yeah, def definitely. So let's, let's, we're looking and we're seeing an apple and a pear. And you're saying, no, we're seeing an apple orchard and a pear orchard. And we want to join God in this work of growing disciple makers, finding some land, preparing the soil with water buckets and uh, soup kitchens maybe. And, but then, then planting the seed, cultivating. Um, what's the next step after the, well, cultivating? The, I guess, do you watch it grow? Can you? Well, you don't want to be digging up the soil <laughs> to see because you allow it to grow all by itself. But yeah, you can see, see it grow. And then ultimately, there's a time for harvest. You know, uh, I, I have this vague recollection when I was little, you're growing something and wanting to kind of open it up prematurely. Yeah. 
What, what, what does that do and how does that relate to this whole growing process? Yeah, well, we, we need to be patient. Um, as a disciple maker, some people respond quickly mm. um, to the gospel and other people take time. And uh, James says that we want to see the harvest, we need to be patient. Mm. And uh, yeah, I, that's something that I need to learn. <laughs> When we come back after the break, we're, we're saying, Lord, help me to be patient and help me now. Uh, but uh, we need to plant the seed, cultivate it, but then let God do the miracle of growth. After the break, we know there's some other important work that needs to happen. We're talking about growing, healthy disciple makers. We'll be right back with more Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, Growing Disciple Makers. Fascinating title. Learning to see as Jesus does and then join him in his uh, disciple-making work. Our guest, Glenn Townend. Glenn, it's been a pleasure to dialogue with you. I know you're passionate about this process. Would you review the first steps and then take us to a very important step? And that's the harvest, but that's not the end either. Sure. Well, we've got to see like Jesus and uh, we've got to see that this pear can be ac actually be an orchard. A pear orchard. Yeah. And, and there's a process because you need to prepare the soil, have people's hearts open by being kind, caring, doing ministry. And then you need to plant the seed, the Bible message, the message of Jesus needs to get into people's hearts and that's sowing the seed. And then we care for people as the seed all by itself grows and we support them through the struggles that they have, teach them how to read the Bible, how to pray, how to praise, um, what they're learning, how to put it into practice. And um, as they're you know, going on that journey, there'll be a time where they'll say, hey, I'm ready to follow Jesus. Wholehearted commitment. Yeah. That's harvest time? That is harvest time. And then sometimes, I mean, Jesus, when he was harvesting, he, he asked people, you know, come follow me. He, he gave an invitation and uh, the disciples responded. Okay. They, they followed, they, they joined in with what Jesus was doing. Now, I'm thinking sometimes Jesus said, someone may plant and you may harvest. Mm -hmm. Other times you may plant and watch the whole process. Sure. Other times, I suppose you could just be planting seeds and, and someone else will harvest later. Mm. But we're all part of that disciple, growing disciple makers. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's the big mistake as I'm hearing the story. A lot of times we have the harvest, we hear the commitment, maybe there's a baptism, and we think, well, that's good, let's go somewhere else. But you're telling me that the work is not finished. No, no. Growing, because talk to me about the last step which actually becomes the first step. It, it sort of does. That, that's true, Derek. Um, what Jesus did when he invited people to follow him was actually show them how to do ministry. So he showed them how to um, heal people and pray for them and serve and cast out demons and all of those things which open people's hearts. He showed them how to preach and teach. And then once he showed them, he sent them out to do it. Mm and said, you know, you get involved in, in ministry. So in other words, Jesus is saying, I'm not the only disciple maker. Exactly. He was making not just disciples, but disciple makers. Mm. And uh, that's why he, when he left, he, had, he trusted the whole future of his message and what he did with 12 key leaders and 120 um, people and out of that, a whole movement developed. And so I guess we need to, to think about how do we develop people in an ongoing way? Mm. How do we help them find their place in the church and in the community? How do we help them to, how can they serve Jesus best? Are they best as a uh, seed sower or are they better as a cultivator? Are they better at preparing the soil? 
but we can all do, as long as we know the process and helping people connect with church and be involved in what um, you know, God is doing in the church and have some kind of ministry, understanding their giftedness. All of that is about developing a disciple maker which helps to multiply. So Jesus invested in, in 12. He multiplied himself by 12. Some would say maybe the 70 or 72. Right. Um, where he invested in them um, as a disciple maker. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where we, we need to get to. What I'm hearing you say, just making sure this is clear, everyone can be involved in this process of Absolutely. growing uh, disciple makers. But you're telling me that some may focus their energies on the seed sowing mm-hmm. as long as someone else is. So, so it's a teamwork. Absolutely. I guess if there's no team, the one person will be careful to lead them through the whole process. Is that right? Yeah. But if the work's going to be done, it would be better if everyone was involved? Absolutely. Yeah. Get, get in, involved in what, you know, what Jesus is doing. And so one of the things that I, I choose to do is actually pick people that I, I know, because yeah, I guess I'm a more mature disciple maker. I've been following Jesus since I was six years of age. Um, and I, I, I say to them, you know, would you like me to support you in, in a journey um, and uh, develop them in their giftedness and, and leadership, spending time, time with them? Um, with my next door neighbour, I listen to him. Now, he's not a Christian, a lapsed Christian, uh, other, and, and just trying to listen and help him in his, his journey. So it can be with anyone. If you have a focus and say everybody potentially is 30, 60 or 100 times yeah. if Jesus is allowed into their life. You're, so, see, you're seeing him not only as a potential candidate for the kingdom, but actually as an, uh, an orchard keeper. Absolutely. A, a disciple maker. Yeah. And, and, you know, every person could be potentially a new church. Mm. Um, and, yeah, they could be far from the kingdom. But if you prepare the soil right, mm. their hearts open. If you get the seed in there allow it time to, to grow and develop mm. at, at God's time and then harvest, it, it does happen. Amazing. Amazing. Glenn, thanks for sharing with us today on Ministry in Motion. I hope you've been inspired to maybe even pray today, Jesus, help me to see as you do. Mm. Help me to see not only fruit out there, but potential orchards. Help me to join you in that work, preparing soil and planting the seed and cultivating as the plant grows, letting God do his miraculous work, celebrating in the harvest time, and then helping those individuals to become disciple makers too. It's an amazing journey that will rejuvenate your life. Go out and be one who helps disciple makers grow. 